YouTube, today we are going to be reviewing the redraft of the 2022 NFL Draft before the NFC and AFC Championship games are played. This is an article by Bleacher Report. So, that being said, we're going to jump into this one. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Showing love is free on YouTube. So... First overall pick, Jacksonville Jaguars select Sauce Gardner. Kind of forget that the Jags were first pick, considering how well they did. Kind of crazy here. Trayvon Walker may become an impactful pass rusher as hoped, but Sauce Gardner immediately shined in the NFL as one of the top QBs. 20 pass defenses, wow. Front runner for Defensive Rookie of the Year. It's really between him and our next selection here, Aiden Hutchinson. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In fact, during the breakout year of Tyson Campbell, and the Jags could have solidified corner duo. Yeah, I mean, he was a freak of nature coming into the draft. He's a freak of nature in the NFL. Great first year. Sauce was everything as advertised. I mean, yeah, he, he probably should have went first overall. Number two, Detroit Lions, Aiden Hutchinson. No change to the Lions. You snagged him. Um, piled up 52 tackles, 9.5 sacks, 29 pressures, intercepted 3 passes, which is insane. I'm pretty sure he had a disgusting interception against the Giants. Um, he is a cornerstone of a much improved Detroit roster. Yes, dude, Aiden Hutchinson is a monster. You have to give this kid respect. He's got a, a motor like no other. He's got a drive to play this game. Absolutely he has the drive to play this game. Moving on, 2-3. Houston Texans, Trayvon Walker. Sticking with Derek Stanley Jr. would be a reasonable option, but a high-end pass rusher is tough to pass up. Walker, 49 tackles, 3.5 sacks, 21 pressures, and provide, would have provided a jolt to the Texans' depth chart that lacked well depth at that position. Yet Trayvon Walker um, hit a very... Sneaky year only because I'm going to say like if you didn't really watch Jag games or whatever you uh, Didn't really hear much of the guy like you would always see Hutchinson popping up on ESPN highlights and everything but Trayvon Walker had a sneaky good year So moving on the Jets get Derek Stingley if you're a Jets fan that would break your heart considering you have sauce now Although he missed half the season because of a hamstring injury he performed well 43 tackles, 5 pass defenses, and a modest 7.6 yards per target. Zero touchdowns. That's huge. Yeah, Derek Stinley, hard to rate this. When he was on the field, he's good, but it's hard to rate when somebody's hurt like that. You can't really, you can't really rate this. Um, I agree. He's definitely going to be good, but let's see if he can stay healthy. Giants get Kayvon Thibodeau, so now being from the New Jersey area, I've been to a good amount of Giants games, seen a good amount of Giants games, almost all of them, and I've seen Kevon Thibodeau personally. Similar to Detroit, Giants don't budge. Kevon Thibodeau had a quiet opening in the beginning of the year, finished on a hot streak. During the last two months, 35 tackles, three sacks, and a touchdown. He's got a motor in the beginning. He's going to be good for the future. In the beginning, I think it took him a little bit to settle in. He wasn't used to the size of these players. I don't think he was used to the speed of these players. I also think he was banged up a little bit. But I do agree. This is the pick that needs to happen. Kevon Thibodeau, sick for the Giants. Interested where Evan Neal goes. Carolina Panthers, Kenny Pickett. Panthers were often connected to Pickett. They picked Akeem Aquanu. Um, looked like long-term blindside protector. Uh, 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 full of subpar QB play, finished 7-10. Pickett could have helped the Panthers win a bad NFC South. If Pickett is there, they win that division. No doubt in my mind, they win that division. I think Pickett is good. They need to give Pickett a little bit more time. But Pickett to the Panthers would have answered a lot of questions. I get, in hindsight, why he went where he went. And I get, in hindsight, why the Panthers picked Akeem Aquanu. Because he was like, 
the next best thing. Uh, Giants get Garrett Wilson. Yeah, well, guess what? Kid is sick. Absolute sick route runner. I dropped um, best route runners of the season or the best routes of the season. He's in there multiple times as a rookie. Okay? No matter if you believe in Daniel Jones as a franchise QB, his receiving core was weak. Second half surges from Ricky James and Hodgins um, saved the Giants, but they could have added Garrett Wilson instead of watching him land on the Jets. 83 catches, 1,100 yards, and four touchdowns. Get this kid a QB that he can play with for the full season, and you're asking for something special here. He is good. Drake London to the Falcons, yeah. Um, Drake London to Chris Olave answers... Blah, blah, blah. Falcons need a physically imposing top receiver. Saying 6'5", London. I did not realize he was 6'5". 72 receptions, 866 yards, and four scores. He would have done better. I genuinely think he needs a solid QB as well. He's a great wide receiver for the future. Didn't realize he's at that size, but he's smooth. This is, I, he's smooth. Seattle goes to Kima Kwanu. Interesting. Uh, borderline pick could help. Could the Seahawks keep Charles Cross? Absolutely. They may wind up in a better pro, uh, to be a better pro. Kwanu slightly outperformed him. Outperformed him. Uh, 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 even more protection for Geno Smith's breakout year. Um, kind of hard. I didn't really see much of Akeem Kwanu considering I didn't watch a lot of Panthers games. I know he was solid, but I know he kind of underperforms for where he went but if you look at that team as a whole that whole team kind of underperforms so I'm not evaluating him based on this year Jets Chris Olave once again I think this is another player that could have um, benefited from a consistent QB I don't think they have a legit QB there so uh, this is the moment the draft gets tricky if the Jets select Olave, do the Saints trade up for him? Uh, in the meantime, Olave descends uh, descends on New York to bolster state receiving core. 72 catches, 1,000 yards, 4 touchdowns. I did not realize he had 1,000 yards. Um, he's good. There's just a lot of questions around that Saints team. Um, I just want to see a consistent QB. Olave is good. I agree with this. He's number 10. Let's see who's in here. Charles Cross to the Saints. Yes, I agree with this. Charles Cross, I loved coming into this draft. Yes, I did not have a YouTube channel yet, but I loved coming into this draft and thought, honestly, he was a little underrated. So, yeah, and the Saints picked Trevor Petting later on. Yeah, Trevor Petting, eh. Cross started all 17 games and left tackles for the Seahawks. He did a good job. New Orleans later picks up Trevor Penning, who endured a rough preseason and, uh, foot injury. He had a rough preseason and a foot injury before managing just 124 offensive snaps. You know, Charles Cross, if you can come in and play left tackle and do a decent job, you, he's deserving of a high pick. Jameson Williams, uh, knowing he missed a large chunk of the 2022 season, it would have been a controversial for an aggressive Saints front office take Jameson Williams. He remains Detroit's big play receiver in hopes to unlock a healthy version of him in 2023. He's going to be electric. Him and Amon Rossi Brown, along with DeAndre Swift, they're going to resign to Amal Williams. That is a very well-rounded offense, and I'm excited to watch them. This kid is a burner. I love him. Jordan Davis, don't fix what's bro what's not broken. Uh, ankle injury sidelined him in November. Provided a style run-stopping presence as a rotational piece. Given that the Eagles are in the NFC Championship game, it feels proper to not touch the selection. I agree. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They select somebody else there. Does it go as well? We don't know. They're in the championship game. Gotta leave it. Gotta leave it. Kyle Hamilton stays with the Ravens. This is interesting. Um, I don't think he had that good of a year, but I guess maybe I could be wrong. Let's see. Had obvious and compelling need to consider receivers as Dobson and Traylon Burks over the Ravens added 
a gem in Kyle Hamilton. He steadily earned a larger role this year, totaled 62 tackles, and allowed only 50 ever, only 5.7 yards per target. I know he struggled in the beginning of the year. He looked a little lost, but he really turned it around. To be honest with you, though, that Ravens team is a little lost at some points this season. So once again, don't know if I can blame it on just one player. Kind of similar to the Akeem Aquanu, um position in Carolina. Tyreek Woolen was arguably the steal of this draft. Um, no, Seattle had an absolute absurd, absurd draft. In the fifth round, they take him. Hello, hindsight, Tariq Woolen, a fifth round pick in Seattle, emerged as one of the best rookie surprises. He posted 63 tackles, six interceptions, three, four, uh, three fumble recoveries, collecting 16 pass defenses, and a Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl as a first year, fifth round draft pick. Come on. That's absurd. I, he could have even went higher than this, and I would have agreed. Yeah, Jahan Dotson staying with the Commanders. Um, provided low excuse as possible for his performance. Washington picked up Jahan Dotson and the speedster dynamic. Seven touchdowns, 35 receptions in 12 games. Promising piece for Washington's future. This is the problem. If they had a better QB between switching with Wentz and Heineke, this kid would have went off. He would have absolutely went off. Look at all their receivers' numbers. They all had down here because they had subpar QBs. Let's see what he does next year. I promise you this kid's good. My Los Angeles Chargers stay with Zion Johnson. I loved him. He started off the year with a bang. He kind of simmered down a little bit toward the end. Um, another golf clap for franchise that crossed its selection. Zion Johnson, a 17-game starter at right guard in Los Angeles, impresses a run blocker and earned a spot. On the all rookie team yeah I mean hey listen if you're gonna come in and play right guard and start every single game and do a good job I agree 17 was good uh, it was a blessing that he came to the Chargers because their offensive line was a nightmare at one point nightmare Tennessee Titans, George Pickens. At the Titans, dealt A.J. Brown. That sent him to Philly. Nobody understands why anybody did that, but we're not going to go there. George Pickens, a second-round pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers. 52 passes, 801 yards, five touchdowns. Would have definitely been the Titans pick. He's nasty. He's NFL young boy, as people say. Um, he's got that. He's legit got that dog in him. Like, actually, this is not because he went to Georgia. Like, he's just mean. He would have replaced A.J. Brown, and he would have been okay doing it. Okay? It would have filled the void a little bit. Better than Trey Burks. But, what a pick. What a pick. He's going to be... Pickett to Pickens is going to be awesome to watch. 19, Traylon Burks to the Saints. Traylon Burks closed his rookie season with 33 receptions, 444 yards, one touchdown. Two injuries limited him to 11 games. Tennessee, their QBs were rough. Okay? Rough. Um, Malik Willis, it's way too early to even play him, and they did. They had to because Tannehill was hurt. I believe they're back up like Josh Dobbs or something beyond him. The, the subpar QB, they relied heavily on Derrick Henry. I think he needs he needs to get a legit QB, and he needs a legit chance. I don't think he's that bad. Here's Steelers taking Evan Neal. Uh, the value is too much to pass up. Evan Neal, mediocre rookie year, I agree. Potential long-term starter, given that Pickett is off the board. A rebuilding Pittsburgh roster could take Neil and let him handle the growing pains he experienced anyway. I agree. He struggled. He struggled. He did not look good. He did okay in the beginning, like okay. But he's struggling to keep up with the speed of the game. And 
you got to give him time. I, but I would say this is fair. Trent McDuffie stays to the Chiefs, huh? If anything, Trent McDuffie should have, should be picked earlier than his original spot with hamstring injury robbed him at two months. McDuffie returned in November uh, for a cr critical spot for the Chiefs. He's been a lockdown corner, only five yards per target. Yeah. I mean, we knew McDuffie was very good coming out. Um, if he played the whole season, you could arguably say he would have been drafted higher in this redraft. But hard to see small sample data with when he came back. You're going to have to judge this one based on next year, but I agree. Quay Walker to the Packers. Reality, our redraft. The question is Devin Lloyd or Quay Walker. Considering both linebackers earned all rookie honors, it's another hair splitting conversation. It leans towards what actually happened. Walker had 121 tackles. I did not know that. That's nasty. He was all over the field. Now I'm thinking about it. He was in every every play. He had three forced fumbles. Yeah, this I I I can see this. He had a quiet 101. 121 tackles, though. Quiet. Following the draft, the Dallas Cowboys expected Tyler Smith to play left guard. Tyron Smith missed 13 games because of knee injury. However, in his absence, Tyler Smith moved to left tackle and responded well. Buffalo needed a corner, but would have benefited from playing him at left guard over ineffective veteran Roger Saffold. I think the Cowboys got a gem with this kid. Um... I think moving him a little bit probably fluctuated his stats, but let this kid settle in, and they're, he's, they're going to go right back to that Cowboys offensive line. Now moving on to the Cowboys. I do agree, Bills could have definitely benefited from that. Christian Watson. Early on, Christian Watson's near absence of production may have seen the Packers wait to the key selection and error in Rodgers' career. Watson broke out late, 31 receptions, 523 yards, 7 touchdowns in the last 8 games. Dallas had no effective wideouts behind beyond C.D. Lamb, which reared its ugly head in the postseason. Christian Watson would have had better numbers. He had a couple dropped balls in the beginning. There was seemed to be miscommunication between Rodgers and the receiving core in the beginning. Don't know if had that had anything to do with the NFL offseason. But, but, He's going to be good, and I do agree with this. Yeah, the Cowboys needed a little wide receiver help. Ravens get Tyler Lindenbaum. Perhaps the most frustrating part of this exercise is not adding a receiver to or for Lamar Jackson. The problem Baltimore nailed. The problem is Baltimore nailed the evaluation of both Hamilton and Lindenbaum. A couple of all look rookie selections as he's done in college. He thrived as a run blocker on a run first Ravens offense. Yeah, I mean this kid was they had a quiet year. You didn't really hear much about him because of all the injury, like Lamar was out. I mean, the team struggled. They had a weird, weird stretch of struggling. I still don't know why, but they did. Um but great pick and very good for that franchise's future to get a good center. Jets, George Karloftis. Back in April, Jets understandably prioritized Ed Rusher with the opening third round pick, Jermaine Johnson. But that the thought of having George Karloftis, I was going to say Jermaine, George Karloftis bolstered this defense is appealing. Six sacks, 21 pressers with the Chiefs. Yeah, they kind of had him more as a rotational piece. Um, I'm not sure how often he played, but this would be a better selection than Jermaine Johnson. You can't knock him at Jermaine Johnson pick because at the time, they got phenomenal value in that pick and where they picked him. Jags are going Devin Lloyd. Uh, Jacksonville jumped all over Devin Lloyd at this spot in April's draft. He ranked third on defense. Wow. 115 tackles, intercepted three passes, two forced fumbles. Um, he played an integral role as the Jags stole the AFC South title. Devin Lloyd, I want to let you know, in the beginning of the season, like four or five games through, was the favorite, was the favorite 
for defensive rookie of the year, and he kind of calmed down a little bit, but he's a good pick. He's a smart linebacker, and you've yet to see everything that this cat that this kid really has in his tool chain. Packers Alec Pierce, Watson headed to Dallas. Complication stuff for Green Bay. Alec Pierce would be the last top option for the Colts, who had a horrible QB situation. He had 41 catches for almost 600 yards and two touchdowns. I like Alec Pierce. I'm going to reiterate that QB situation over there. He's better than his stats. He's better than advertised. His QBs were worse than advertised. I think he would have been sick on the Packers, so... I agree with this. Okay. New England Patriots, Dylan Parham. Right position, different player, third round pick, Las Vegas Raiders. Dylan Parham lined up at three spots along the offensive line, but settled at left guard. He endured a fair share of rookie moments, yet offered hope for frustrating Las Vegas offense. And hey, Cole Strange might have found his way to New England anyway. Cole Strange was not a first round pick. I don't think anybody was taking him in the first round. Arguably, I would say he was there for the second. But that's a Bill Belichick move. Having playing three spots along the line is very, very valuable. Yes, he had rookie moments, but having that versatile of a player earns him this position, and I do agree with the Patriots, and they also need a little bit better line still. Chiefs go James Houston. Penn State safety Jaquan Brisker landed serious consideration, but Casey needed an edge rusher more than a safety. James Houston, sixth round pick. What? Only seven games for Detroit. Have registered a dazzling eight sacks. Wow. Yeah, see, Kansas City would have thrived with this. It would have been a great rotational piece for them. He would have been a great pass rusher in that AFC West that was supposed to be the best in the league, and it wasn't. We all know how the Raiders, the Chargers, and especially the Broncos performed. But, yes, I agree with this pick. Pick 31 here is an interesting one for me. I am a Chargers fan, so I know Jamari Sawyer very well. The reworked offensive line in Cincinnati has survived, not, nece not necessarily thrived. Jamari Sawyer had experience at most, multiple spots in college, and he showed off that versatility as the emergency left tackle for the Chargers. Sawyer could have provided the same impact after a knee injury ended the Bengals' right tackle, Lowell Collins. Jamari Sawyer was an absolute thug on what he was able to come in and do he was no Rashawn Slater. Rashawn Slater was absolutely disgusting. You're talking about a guy that came in as a sixth round pick and started at left tackle for majority of the season and did very well. He is a first round talent in how he performed and the Bengals would have loved this kid because he pretty much could play anywhere on that offensive line but center. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal pick. I love that they gave him this recognition. 32, Vikings, Jack Jones. New England uncovered a fourth-round diamond in Jack Jones while providing 30 tackles, two interceptions, a pick six, did not allow a touchdown on 37 targets. Patrick Peterson was so subpar. I honestly say that he could you could blame that loss in the playoffs against the Giants against him. Jack Jones would have solved that. You need a corner coming into this draft because of that, you have a corner going in the previous draft. I 100% agree with this. Um, Vikings need help in their secondary, and Jack Jones was another steal in this draft. So, that being said... That wraps up the redraft of the 2022 Bleacher Reports redraft. So, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. 